Welcome to our lecture online. Now our next example, again, we're going to go a cable with a concentrated load. And the reason why we do that is we want to be able to go back and forward and be able to figure out, okay, this is how we solve this type and this is how we solve that type before we start looking at the catenary. So at least one more example before we go to the catenary examples. So here we have a cable. The horizontal distance between the two support points is a total of 60 meters. All the attached points are equal distance apart from one another. It's not quite drawn like that to scale, but at least assume that that would be the case. We are given one sag dimension, the distance from the line that connects A to B to the lowest sag point at C is assumed to be 12 meters. And for part one, we're going to try to find the components at the support point B in the X direction and the Y direction. Let's start out with the y direction first. Notice here that the force in the x direction will, if we take the moment about point A, that F, the force in the x direction will then go away because the line of action goes right through the pivot point or through the point of rotation. So we can go ahead and use this equation. The sum of all the moments about point A have to add up to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, the three loads, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000 newtons, will cause a clockwise torque about point A, which means that these are going to be negative moments. So minus 4,000 times the 15 meters, minus 6,000 times 30 meters, and minus 8,000 times, that would be 45 meters. And a slight correction here, notice that this should be E. Normally I call them A and B, but since I went down the line here, A, B, C, D, let's call that E because, yeah, I do have the subscript for the forces at that location as E's. And that's what we're trying to find here. We now have our three loads. The only force remaining causing a moment about point A would be the force in the Y direction. The force in the X direction, the line of action goes right through that point. Don't have to consider it. This will give us a counterclockwise moment, therefore plus the force at point E in the Y direction and the distance from the point of rotation to where the force acting, that perpendicular distance, is a total of 60 meters. Which means now that if we move all these three terms to the other side, they become positive. We turn the equation around. We now have the force at E in the y direction equals, that would be 4,000 times 15 plus 6,000 times 30 plus 8,000 times 45. And the whole thing then divided by the coefficient of this term right here, which would be 60. All right, now we're ready with the calculator to calculate that. You know what? We can make it simpler here. So let's say this is 4,000 times 15 divided by 60, which is a quarter, plus 6,000, 30 divided by 60, which is a half, plus 8,000, 45 divided by 60, which is 3 quarters. Uh, who needs a calculator? Let's keep going. 4,000 times a fourth, which is 1,000. 6,000 times a half, which is 3,000. And 8,000 divided by 4 is 2,000 times 3 is 6,000. And notice that this then is equal to the force component at the support point E in the y direction is equal to a total of 10,000. And the units, we were using newtons. All right, so this is the force at E in the Y direction. Now we need to find the force in the X direction. Luckily, we're given this distance right here, which means we can take the sum of the moments about point C and see what happens. I was kind of wasteful with the board space, but let's go ahead and use this little piece right here as a remainder. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the sum of the moments about point C. Of course, that has to be equal to zero. That is equal to, here we have the 8,000 Newton force, so we're only going to consider this part of the cable. We're going to ignore that part of the cable. With cables, we're able to do that, which is great. So from this point, 
We look at this point that gives us a clockwise moment that means minus 8,000. And the distance would then be, oh, hopefully we don't need that anymore, distance here would be 15 meters. We do need F in the Y direction that will give us a counterclockwise moment that would be plus F E in the Y direction. We now know what that is. That's equal to 10,000 newtons. We multiply that times 30 meters. And F E X in the F E X that will give us a clockwise torque or moment about point C that would be minus F E X and we do know the distance of the line of action of force to this point right here, 8 sub c was given to us as 12 meters. Okay, we can now solve for that, f e x, we can move that across here, so we have f e x times 12 is equal to minus 8,000 times 15, and this would be plus 10,000 times 30, and of course we can divide both sides by 12. And let's use a calculator this time. All right, 8,000, that's times a negative, times 15, plus 10,000 times 30, which is 300,000, equals, and divide that by 12, equals. And we get the x component of the force at E, that is equal to 15,000 newtons. And that is how we find the components of the support point at E, both in the Y and the X direction. Of course, luckily, they did give us this piece of information, otherwise we'd have trouble finding F, E sub X. And that's how it's done.